morning. Welcome to the Church in the Woods. Hope you guys are having a wonderful morning wherever you're at. We are uh, going to read out of Isaiah chapter 40. If you would, please let me know where you're watching from. Uh, I love to see the different places we're reaching. And I pray that something will be said that will help someone today. I don't know what to preach this morning. I don't know uh, what the Lord has in store but we have what we need that's what he told me this morning because i've been up uh searching and i just don't have a clue where we're going today uh, matter of fact i randomly just picked this scripture i'm gonna read if the lord wants me to read a different scripture then i know he'll bring that out too but this is just what's on kind of stuck out to me um i want to say before we get started we are doing uh devotions in the mornings and we're praying for the I will stand Samson rally and tent revival April the 9th at Hubs farm so if you would keep keep praying with us on that that God will send a outpouring of his Holy Spirit uh, in them services and that many people will be saved the church will be encouraged people will be filled with the spirit and you know in 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 our lives we can be, become overwhelmed we can become uh, obsessed um with the things going on in our world to the point where we miss god and we we can't even really see what he's doing and with that being said he's just give me something else to read but uh it's just we have to be obedient to the holy spirit and sometimes that means doing things that that we just don't feel like doing or want to do but we need to be obedient to god and when we're obedient to god and we realize it's by faith, it's not by feelings. We walk by faith. We don't walk by our sight. And so when we get consumed with this world and all we see is the things of this world, we start losing our faith. We start looking more at this world and what we can get from this world or how we can fix this world. And the Lord wants us to keep our eyes on him. And when we don't see him in things, it's because we're overwhelmed and we're looking at the world. He's in everything. He's moving. He's working all things out for our good and his glory. And we have what we need. We have him if you're a child of God. And I want to read this scripture to you. In John chapter 5, it's what he just laid on my heart while I'm standing here. I want to read this to you. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. That man was so consumed with his surroundings and what he was dealing with over and over again every day in this world that he completely missed, didn't see Christ standing right there, the, the, the one that could speak life to him, the one that could touch him and heal him, the one that could just tell him to stand up, rise, take up their bed and walk. And he was surrounded by people just like him. The Bible says it was impotent folk, many around him were surrounded. You know, we're surrounded by so much seems like so much gloom and so much doom sometimes and so much bad seems to be happening. But we need to understand that the Word of God teaches us that we are surrounded as a child of God by so great a cloud of witness. And we should run our race. That cloud of witness is not this world. It's a, another world. It's, a, it's the heavenly kingdom of God. We're surrounded by angels. We're protected. We're surrounded by the, the Spirit of God who lifts up a standard against the enemy. When he comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. We're in fear with the Spirit of God. And when we start looking at this world and the troubles of this world and we become overwhelmed, 
we have to step back a minute and say, you know, I got to refocus. I got to refocus on what's going on here because I'm looking at my problems. I'm looking at other people's problems. What I need to start seeing is Christ and how he's working these things out. And the reason we go through things in life and the reason we face tribulations and trials is not because God is trying to punish us, not because God is angry with us, but it's because God is trying to stretch us. He's trying to stretch us to a point where he can remove some things in our lives that shouldn't be there so he can give us more of himself. And that's called sanctification. It's called being set apart. It's not a good feeling to be sanctified. It's not a good feeling to be set apart because our flesh wants this world. I would love to, to, to get up in the morning and have a message for you guys and then strike out and go to work, make a lot of money, uh, kick back, watch the ball games at night, not really study my Bible, pray when I feel like it. I'm just being honest with you. I would love to do that because my flesh wants to do that. My flesh wants to serve God a little bit, but live in the world a lot. But see, we war against this flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal or worldly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We have to cast down those thoughts and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of Christ. I, I have so much going on in me sometimes of this world that it's hard for me to see Jesus just as this man. I got so consumed this morning with not having a message that all I really wanted to do was post a scripture and tell y'all have a blessed Sunday. Because I'm like, you know, I don't know what to preach, Lord. I prayed last night. I got up this morning and studied. You know, I caught the ball game. I watched Duke and Carolina play last night. And I'm like, God, are you mad because I watched the ball game? And so you're not going to get I'm just being, can I be honest? And I'm sitting there thinking, what have I done? What's wrong? And you know what the Lord says to me? He says, you have what you need. You have what you need. No, I don't, Lord. No, I don't. I don't have a scripture. I don't have a message. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to get on here and be sad. I don't, I don't want to get on here. And people say, well, he's just a sad Christian. I don't want to get on here and, and complain. He says, you have what you need. You have what you need. Overwhelmed by circumstances. Overwhelmed by the world. Anytime we get to a point of hopelessness and being overwhelmed, I think about, I, I can think about what I just read you, this man. For 38 years, he had nobody to help him. Where was his parents? Where was his family at? He was surrounded by death and sickness and disease. Nobody would help him. And all he could see was how bad his life was and how bad the situation was when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to him and said, will you be made whole? I don't know. There's got to be somebody else out there feeling this today like I am, but we, we are in a real battle. A real battle in this world. And things have gotten worse, and things are going to get worse. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but the Bible says it's going to wax worse and worse. And what we should be looking for, y'all, is Jesus. The return of Jesus Christ. If this man had been looking for Christ, laying there thinking Jesus will come, I'm looking for Jesus, he wouldn't have been... He wouldn't have missed it. He would have known. And I, I just, I feel this in my heart that how many of us can relate to this guy? We're not looking for Jesus. What should we be doing in these last days? Looking for Jesus. Looking for the return of Christ. He's coming back. And all we can do, if you're like me, is complain. Whine. I don't understand. Why, God? Why does it have to be this way? And what I should be doing is looking for Christ. The return of Christ. Because he's allowing us to be here. He's allowing us to suffer through this persecutions. He's allowed the sum, not like many people are losing their life in other places, other countries, other other areas for standing for Christ. We complain or I complain when I don't when I have to stand up here, don't have a message. When God says, No, you have what you need. I'm just not looking for him. If I was truly looking for Jesus Christ to come back today. Nothing could have stopped me from coming down here to tell somebody that Jesus is about to return. 
and you need to get saved today. You see how easy we can start looking at the world and forget and not even notice what's really going on around us? We're so cons I, we can get so consumed with what we see with our natural eye that we completely miss the spiritual realm that is more real than the natural because honestly, we're going to live in eternity. This world is passing by. The Bible says our life is as a vapor. It's gone here one day and gone the next. So my focus should be on eternal things. But it's easy to get caught up in this world. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh God, give us the power and the understanding to apply this to our lives. Help us to see you in every circumstance of our life. Whether we be in sickness or whether we be in health, whether we be in financial ruin, whether we be on financial mountaintop, help us to see you and not be looking at the world and the things around us that are deteriorating, but God, keep our eyes on you and be looking for the return of Christ, looking for your return, Lord. And I want to tell you this morning, if you're watching this video, maybe you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. You have never been born again. You've heard about it, maybe, You've, people have talked to you about it, or maybe you've sat in a church for many years, but you've never been born again. Jesus Christ is about to return for his church. Listen to me. The Bible is unfulfilling itself daily in front of us. The signs of his return have been happening and happening and happening. There is nothing else that must happen before the return of Christ. He could come back before we finish with this video. He can come back any second. And the most important decision you'll ever make is not where you're eating lunch today, not who you're going to marry, not how much money you can save, not, not what kind of career you're going to have, not even what church you're going to. The most important decision you'll ever make is are you born again? Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Because like this man I read about that you might have missed, you might just be tuning in. He was so consumed with the sickness and disease around him in his own suffering that he completely missed Jesus Christ coming to him personally and saying, will you be made whole? God has come to you this morning through this phone, through Facebook, this platform, and he says, will you be made whole? Will you have your life changed? Will you surrender yourself to Christ? Will you receive his forgiveness, his grace? Will you have your sins lifted off from you? and cast as far as the east is to the west. Will you be redeemed and set free, justified before a holy God? Justification is a declaration by God that says, I justify you. It doesn't matter what a man says. It doesn't matter what people think of you. Your past is irrelevant. When God justifies you, he says, who the Lord has set made clean is clean. Let no man call it unclean. Who the spirit of the Lord sets free is free indeed. God will free you today. The way he does that is through the cross. When Jesus Christ hung on the cross and shed his blood for you and me, it was personal. As he hung on that cross and his blood was being spilled out, you were on his mind. You say, I don't believe that. I don't Listen to me. You were on his mind. Before the foundations of the world, if I had time, I'd get into it. Before the foundations of the world, he knew what he was going to do. He knew where you were going to be. He knew you'd be watching this. People say, well, Facebook's just an evil thing. You know, yeah, a lot of these people are always picking about different. Everybody wants to find something wrong with everything. But let me tell you something. Billy Graham recognized that television was the next avenue, and they were in, everybody was in radio. He went to TV, and he reached multitudes, millions of people all across the world. Facebook's no different. It's a platform. It's, it's a way to pre reach people with the gospel. And somebody's watching today in a whole other place, a state, 
somewhere else and you're hearing this and you're, you know that something's happening because the Spirit of God has come to you and He's drawing you to the cross. And that's a, that's a presence. It's a presence of God that comes to you and you see yourself as you really are. You know that you're lost. And as I mentioned when we started just a second ago, is God dealing with your heart? Is there a, have you ever received Christ? You've never been born again? I'm not talking about join, joining a particular church. I'm not talking about all this thing. I'm simply asking you, have you been saved? Have you been saved? Because your eternal soul is in the balance. And Christ has come to you this morning. And he says, will you be made whole? He wants to strengthen you. He wants to pour his spirit into you. He wants to set you free from all these worlds. And, and, and there'll be times like I started in this video when you'll feel down, you'll be weary, and you'll say, God, I don't know what to do. You saved me. You called me. I was on cloud nine yesterday. Today, I feel like I'm in hell. God will always be with you through every circumstance in your life. Whether you're in heaven, he will be there. Whether you make your bed in hell, the scripture says he'll be there. Anywhere you go, God is there. He's omnipresent. There's no thing or anything that any creature that can keep his love from you and I. Nothing can separate us from his love. And he's come to you today. And he's saying, will you be made whole? Will you be saved today? Wherever you're at, if God is speaking to your heart through this message, simply call out to Jesus. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. His name is Jesus. That's the Lord's name. It's not Buddha. It's not Confucius. It's not Muhammad. God's name, the Savior's name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's the words of Christ. Bold declaration of who he is and what he come to do. He says, I've come to seek and to save the lost. That's you. He came to this world looking for you. When he walked this world 2,000 years ago, believe it or not, you were on his mind. He constantly was looking at the cross. The cross was a joy set before him. He looked at the cross, wanting to go to the cross to set you free from your sins. That's the love that God has for you. God commended his love toward you that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. While you were doing all you could do to blaspheme God and whatever it is you think you've done and you've gone so far that God won't forgive you, God loves you with an everlasting love. Your soul, the real you, is beyond any value that you know. You do not understand the, how priceless you are to God. There is nothing God will not do to rescue you, to bring you into his family, to set you free. And he proved that on the cross when he gave his only begotten son to die in your place and to rise again the third day. So when we take our last breath here as a child of God, it's not death for me, but it's a doorway right into another place. As Billy Graham said, I'll be more alive there than I've ever been because that's where we belong. We belong with God. So right where you're at, and the Holy Spirit of God is drawing you to the cross and you know that you're lost. Call out to Jesus right now. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. You're speaking to me. It's me that you're speaking to, Lord. Please forgive me of all my sins. I confess that I'm a sinner. Oh, Lord Jesus, I put my faith in you. You died on a cross for me. You bled on that cross. Your blood was payment for my sin. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remissions of sin. His blood was shed for me and you. He died in our place and rose again the third day. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. Confess your sins. We must repent. Turn from your sin. Turn from this world. Turn from the, the evil, the wickedness of this world. And put your faith in Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. If you make that decision today, I want you to type in, I am just one. And the reason we ask you to do that, we've asked people to do that for going on a few years now, I guess. 
I am just one because this video is for one. When we come down here, it's for one. There's somebody watching today. God is dealing with your heart. Your eternal soul weighs in the balance. What can this world offer you? What can what, what you've been doing, how can it benefit you? You're going to take your last breath one day. Your heart will stop one day. It's appointed in a man once to die and then a judgment. Christ is going to return one day. Could be before we die. We need to be right with him. And the way you get right with God is you simply come to him as a child. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I turn from my sin. I put my faith in you and your finished work on the cross. And I'm going to follow you. If you've made that decision this morning, I want you to type in, I am just one. And everybody sees it. You say everybody will see it? Yes. But he says, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you when you come before my Father and the holy angels. We live in a world that needs to see Christ. They don't need to see the darkness they're seeing with no light. They need to see people standing and saying, I'm a child of God. I'm not ashamed of the one that died for me. I am just one. And secondly, when you type that in, we see it, we'll message you, and we'll send you a free Bible and some literature to help you get started on your Christian walk. That's why we ask you to do it. First, to be a public witness of your testimony, be a witness, and then secondly, so we can send you a Bible and some information to help you get started. I know it's hard. I know life is hard. I know that it seems sometimes that there's no hope. But I promise you, the Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus is your hope. And he has come to you today. And he says, will you be made whole? Will you be set free? Just call out to him. Surrender your life to him. Turn from your sin. Ask him to forgive you. He will. He says he will abundantly pardon. He says, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be made as wool. Think about that. God will cleanse you. He says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Put your faith in Christ today. Receive the free gift of salvation and follow him. If you make that decision, you type in, I am just one. We will message you. We will send you a Bible and some literature because people that donate to this ministry free of charge, it doesn't cost you a dime. We give God all the praise and the glory for it. And we give God the praise and the glory for moving on people's hearts to give. So we can do that because it's all about him. Father, I pray for those that are watching. I have no idea knowing if anybody was saved today, Lord. You know the hearts. You know people's hearts. But, Lord, I pray if there are any just ones this morning, I praise you for it. I praise you for rescuing them out of darkness and bringing them into the marvelous light. And, Lord, I pray for those that are watching that were struggling or going through a rough time like I was this morning, Lord, that they'll remember that you're in everything, everywhere. And Lord, you're ever-present help in times of trouble. We just pray for more strength. We pray for more of your Holy Spirit to stand. We pray that we be bold in these last days, that we recognize that it's a precious opportunity to live in this time, that when the world may be so dark, but your children are the light because of you dwelling in us, and that we can reach multitudes of people with the gospel if we'll just simply go and do what you've commanded us to do. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.